Hello everyone, I am Atsi, and welcome to the Unity Basics. Now, there's a lot of stuff we're going to go over. There's going to be stuff I skip, because, you know, like I said, basics. But, one day, we will get back to them. So if I've, you've noticed I miss anything after going through everything I want to explain, don't worry, it's, just be, it's intentional, it's because I don't, it's not time for that yet, because it's not going to be something that people at a beginner level who need this video are going to be using yet. So, to start this off, let me explain all these tabs right here. First off, we got right here, this is the scene view. This is where your game, you're going to be building your game in and such. So if you want to, so right now, we have the camera, which we can move around if we want to. Right now, you see the little camera preview, there's nothing to see. And then other than that, in our, in our scene view, we have a directional light, which lights up our scene. So after that, we have the game view. This is what the player will see when the game is running. So to actually play the game, right up here you have three tabs, you have pause, play, and step. Right now we're going to worry about play. So when you hit play, this will be your game. You'll be seeing your game. And you can pause if you like, that way you can go and maybe move something around. Let's say you just want to change the rotation of your camera a little. And then you can hit play, and it won't, not everything will pause. Maybe if you have an enemy walking around, you don't want them to go and catch you when you're trying to adjust something. Might I mention that you've noticed the camera rotated back? Make sure when you adjust things, you're not playing the game. If you're in play, and you adjust something, like let's say, again, I just adjust the rotation of the camera, it won't save, and you can't, like, control S to save it. You've got to be out of the play mode. Nothing you do in the play mode will save, so don't make sure you're not building a bunch of stuff while you're in play mode, because it'll all be undone. So, now that we're in here... The last tab is the asset store. This here you can find stuff if you like. Well, let's say you want laser or something. Then you search it, find some stuff in here. You want only free stuff or something, click free tab, and you'll find some things in here. Typically it's better to look for it in a browser or something like Chrome or Firefox, and it'll ask you if you want to open in the Unity tab, and then you open it up. There you go. A little easier that way because in the assets in the Unity, I've noticed a little slower. So that's all the tabs up here for what you'll be seeing in your game. But over here, in the hierarchy under where it says sample scene, this is where your objects will be placed. So as you can see right here, we have the directional light in our scene, and it's over here in the hierarchy, along with the camera. And you can add things to it, like let's say we want to, you can hit Control D to duplicate something. No, we have two cameras, and it will show up over here. So that's what that's, so that's what this is for, listing all the objects you have in your scene. So, if you want to add new objects, you can hit right-click, and it'll show down here, and then you have a bunch of objects to add. Now, you can also hit a, go up here in Game Object, and that'll give you a bunch of options as well, so... But we'll right-click, or it's interchangeable, it doesn't really matter either way. So, we'll start with the Empty Object. This right here, where it says Create Empty, will make you an Empty Object. So, what this Empty Object is, is depends on what you're doing. Maybe if you can add components to it, as you see right here, and add things to it, depending on what you're doing. If you want to add a box collider, which we'll go over in a little while, then you'll add a box collider, and you can do what you want with it. The point of it is that it's there is nothing on it, except for a transform, which you need if you want to move it around, or rotate it, or scale it up. Which, if it doesn't have anything on it, it's not going to scale up anything. But this will be a box collider, now it will scale up. But otherwise, it wouldn't. It's also good for adjusting, or adjusting what, for organizing your hierarchy. So let's say you want to add lights under this. Then you could take your directional light and any other lights you might have in it and then put it underneath the object. So then you can close it up and all your lights would be under that tab and it just keeps things neater and more organized. That's a couple things with the empty game object. After that, we have the 3D shapes. We won't go over 2D because I'm not too familiar with 2D, so we're going to stick with 3D right now. And you have different shapes you can add. You can add a cube if you want, or you can add, let's say you want to add a capsule, or all these different types of shapes you've got in here. You have some other things in here as well, the Text Mesh Pro, the Ragdoll, and like Tree, Wind Zone. We won't go over those, we'll just stick with the generic shapes. If you want to add something called a terrain, you can add that. As you see, this thing is huge. And what this is for is doing things like, let's say you want to make like a forest or something, or just some outside land. That's what you could use this for by going over these tabs, like painting the textures and such, 
which is something, terrain is something we'll go over another time. So for now, we'll ignore that. Um, and if you want to add anything other shapes, you have loads of them in here, all types of stuff. And this would be a case where if you, let's say you want to put shapes under a tab, again, create an empty game object, take all your shapes, and put it underneath there. There you go. Now all your stuff is organized, and you can actually move them all together when you click the empty game object. So with the shapes, they're all going to be the same except for something here called a collider. So we'll have different colliders and such. So we'll stick with the cube because that's the most basic. And what you'll have in here is you have a, a mesh filter. This will allow you to add a mesh of some sort. This will be where your object is. It knows what object it's supposed to be adding your mesh to. And after that, you have your mesh renderer. This will be what mesh, which a mesh is a color or what the object is supposed to look like. So, for example, we have a default material as a mesh. So that's what color is going, that's what the color of the cube is going to be. And there's other times where if you have like a person or something, it'll be a lot different. You'll have a different something called a material, which is the color and what the object looks like on it. So that's what you see right here, material. So you can go in here and you can change the material if you want. So let's say we wanted to default skybox. Boom. Now this, now this guy has a color of the default skybox. But for now... We'll keep it to the default material. So, that's how you mess with the color of the object if you want. Then, what we can do is there's, you can adjust whether it has casting shadows on or off, or you can have it only, only casting shadows. But, we'll just keep it to on, the easiest one. And, other than that, on the here we have a box collider. Now, what this does is makes it a solid object. Because if without this on here, if I shut this off, you could go right through it as if it wasn't there. This gives it some, a solid surface so that it surrounds the cube. Same with the other shapes, you have different ones, so like the capsule and the cylinder, they have capsule colliders. This gives the collider a different shape. So if I were to, let's go over to the capsule. If I were to shut off the material, you see right here, this right here is the capsule. This is the collider, this is the actual solid object. So that's what that's gonna do. Same with the cube. If you go over to him, which you can double click, by the way, to go over to them. I show this off, you can see the cube with the green lines. That's what the actual collider is. That way, if we have a first person character, couldn't walk through it. But there are times where you will want to use it. Other things with this, with the box collider, you can adjust where, you know, where it is and such. You probably want to keep it center around the object. And you can adjust the size. Maybe you don't want to go right up to the object, so maybe you want to make it a little bigger than the actual object. So that's what that you can do to adjust that. Typically, it's probably best to keep the collider the same size as the actual object. And other than that, we have something right here, which is, is trigger. When you click this, this ob the object will now be, you can walk through it again. But that's for doing something else with triggers where an event occurs when you walk through the object. Which is something we'll go over in another video. And you do the same thing here, you have trigger right here as well. Adjust the size and such, and so on. So, after the Shapes tab, let's go under Effects. So, we're only going to be focused on the Particle System, because that's the only, like, one that you're going to be using more often at a beginner level. So, under the Particle System, as you see right now, it's just from white dots shooting off. They go off for a little bit, and then eventually they fade away. Doing is creating much of 2D shapes with some sort of force, pushing them off in a direction of some sort, and then it's, you know, shut, getting rid of them. It's destroying the objects. You can use this for things such as maybe you make confetti or something, or if you want to make fog, you can adjust the settings over here. There's a lot of stuff going with the, going over the particle system. That's probably something I'm going to do in a separate video because it would take a lot longer to go over in this video. I just want to explain how to create these objects and go over more basic stuff. So we'll ignore adjusting things. For basic stuff, you want to make, let's say you're okay with the white dots. You adjust how long it goes for. If you want to go for 10 seconds and then stop. Uh, you can turn off the looping, so after the 10 seconds, you hit restart. Then it will only shoot off the dots for about 10 seconds. Then after that, it'll stop. Other than that, you can adjust the color if you want. Maybe you want to have little red dots or something. You could make fog, as you can see right there, it just stopped. Let's say you want to make it gray or something. Then you could just adjust the size or something like that. Start speed, probably want to slow it down a little, and just adjust the size, but we'll go over that later. So, after the particle system, in effects, we're going to go over lighting. The main three lights we're going to focus on is directional light, point light, and the spotlight. 
The others are useful, but not right now. But for now, we're going to stick to the regular. Directional light, we have that right here. I'll go over to the one that's already here. What you're going to do with this, you can adjust the color if you want. Let's say you want a real green light on everything. As you can see, there's a green light being projected onto all these objects, where the light is coming from. By the way, the light is right here, but that does not mean that it's going to... Because let's say like this, you know, right here, the cylinder is behind the light to where the little beams are shooting down. That doesn't matter. It's going to be coming up from the sky right up there, as you can see. So that's basically, you can see right there, that's not actually where the sun's always going to be because you can change the sky box, different colors and such, or not just colors, you can change it completely to look like outer space or just cloudy or something. So that's not always going to be there. This is just showing you what direction it's pointing in. Which you can change over here with the rotation. So let's say you want to be focused straight down. Or straight ahead, I guess. There you go, straight down. Now to be straight down, as you notice, the sides of these are no longer green. But the tops of them are, because that's where the light is focused. So that's what that'll do. Other than that, you have other settings where you can change it to the different types of lights. We're not going to do that. The scale doesn't do anything. The position does. You can change the position if you want. Um, and other than that, we have other things we can go over. The intensity, that's how strong the light is. So if I up this to 3, you notice these got a lot brighter. And if you want to really go crazy, you can go like, let's say, 90. You can see that's ridiculously bright. It's not a good thing. So we'll keep that at 1. Best to keep it there. And for now, we're not going to mess with any of the other col uh, any colors. What? Any of the other settings. We're going to leave them as is for now. But that's the basics of the direct, um, the direct light. And after that, we have the point light. Now what the point light will do is, that'll give a general light to a certain area. As you can see this big sphere right here, within this sphere, it'll give light. So the scale also doesn't affect this or anything. You can rotate it, it won't really change much, unless you have a specific type of light with a texture or something, which we'll go into later. The position is messed with, you can adjust that. But... Other than that, there are, as you notice, there's a lot less settings than directional light. You can also adjust the color, like the directional light, but the difference is it's not as strong. So let's say you want to put this, let's get this cylinder rain to here. It's not as bright as the directional light. You can up the intensity if you'd like, same as the sun, or directional light, and you notice now there's some blue. Once again, you can go crazy if you want. Now it's a crazy bright light, but once you get too bright it starts to mess with a little like this doesn't quite fade in to the actual cylinder or anything which you could rotate by the way and it will stay the same the lighting will stay there but other than that you don't want to make things too bright because otherwise it's a little much so after that the final light for now is the spotlight now this will be good for things like a flashlight or something uh we'll test on the uh cylinder again and this will be not only that, maybe you want to adjust something else, maybe a uh, spotlight on a stage or something. you got to get creative with it, really. And what these have also has different settings. As you notice, if I bring it closer, it gets brighter. Bring it further away, it gets darker. That's actually not the case. It's because there's something blocking it. If you notice right there, that's all the light that's, shining, that's getting blocked by the cylinder. So if we move it over a little, you can see that. But it just has more room to move around. That's because of the radius it's covering. The light is covering. Which you can just over here with the spot angle. Now what this does is it allows you a bigger area to be covered in light. So we move it up. You can see that gets wider. So now this whole area over here, if I move it up a little more, now the cube is getting touched too. Almost. As you can see, it's not quite reaching there, so it won't be touched. But you can make it reach there by adjusting the range. This is how the distance from the light source all the way to wherever you set the range to. This little circle right down here. So if you, let's say you want to up it to 30. Now the cube is being touched by the light, if it's within the light source. Let's be sure I'll move it in here. Now you can't really notice too much. However, if you want to up the intensity of the spotlight as well, you can also do that. That's crazy again, 90. That's turned this cube completely white. Because it's so bright. That's why you want to make things too bright. So we'll keep it at one. We'll actually get rid of these lights right here. And the product system, I guess. So that's to do with lights we'll use for now. Not much you can, a lot a whole lot you can do with them yet, but we'll get into more advanced stuff later. Um, we'll stick with just the audio source under the audio tab. 
So all this does is it gives you a, well, as it says, source of audio. So you, if you want some sound to play, that's what this will do. So let's find a sound. Uh, well, there's none. I guess Unity doesn't give you pre-sound. Let me pull up a sound real quick. So I've added a sound. I'll add it up here. We'll go over down here in the project settings in a second. So now the sound is played. If we just play the game, you hear nothing. However, if we hit this tire, this little tick, this little option right here for play and awake, and we hit play, now you heard the sound. And you also have other settings. You have the loop option, so we'll keep play and awake checked, and this will do what it sounds like it says. Keep playing it over and over and over. That's you're likely only going to be using for music or something if you want to loop it, keep it going. Um, and other than that, you just gotta get creative with it, really. So you can adjust the volume over here. This will make it quieter, obviously. So we hit play now. Whoops. Did not hit play on awake. Unticked to that, but mistake. So we come in here, you can hear it playing. Turn it down. Generic stuff. So, other than that, you have some other stuff you can do. You can mute it if you want, add an audio mixer. We'll go over that another time. And down here, you can adjust whether it's 3D sound. This will make it so if you turn your head or something, like a player turns their character in a video game, you hear it from the right, left. That's what it does. This adjusts the distance you'll hear it from. So if you want to only be able to hear it from a distance of 5, then unless you're in this little blue sphere right here, you won't hear it. So if you're outside of that, you won't hear it. Inside, you will. So after the audio source is the UI. Now, to start with the UI, you go over, you add canvas. Canvas is what you need if you want to display text, or not just text, but anything that will be, is in a two, 2D format that's you want to overlay over your camera. For maybe, for example, a main menu. You want to add buttons and some text like title of the game and such. You need the canvas to display those things. So you can right click on the canvas, now that we have one, and go down under the UI tab again, and you can add text. As you can see right here, you have text, which we can adjust what we want. We could say just generic stuff. You can adjust the fonts. You have different, if you have, you have to install different fonts and such. Font size, you can make it bigger if we want, 60. So if you notice, it actually disappeared when I changed the font size. That's because you have two settings right here, wrap and the, and the truncent. And if you change these to overflow, now you can see it overflows out of the little box area. You, typically, I prefer that it be kept inside, whoopsie, because that way you know it won't, you don't have problems with like clipping if somebody has a different size screen or something. But if we want to just make the size of the text a little bigger, the best way to mess with the UI is to, right here, this little tab says 2D, hit that, now we're in 2D mode. So now if we make the text bigger, or the box that holds it, now we can see it. But now it won't go outside of this box. So, that's what you do with that. The other UI objects we'll go over is the raw image. Basically, the raw image you can use for something, let's say, you can adjust things, generic stuff like the color or something. Maybe you want to make the background for your main menu, then you could do that. Right here, your different sizes for it and such. But to really use it for this, you've got to hold Alt. And then if you want to stretch along the bottom, maybe for a text box or something. Or let's say you want to stretch over the whole screen. Now it'll fit the whole screen. So that's what you can do with that. And other than that, you have in here, you have a few different settings. You like the button, that's a generic one you're going to use. To use this, you can go under here, has a text on it. Which, you have, as we said before, you can change it. Play. Then it will allow you to play your game. If we actually go into the game mode, we actually click the button. Right now, it doesn't do anything. That's because down up in the actual button settings, which you can adjust things. Let's say you want to make the color red or something with the button. Now you can do that. And down here you have some different settings where you can adjust how dark it is when it's highlighted, like when you hover the mouse over it or something. Let's say you want it yellow or something when you hover over the button. Make sure you change your color up here of the button actually back to white though. The normal color, you can change that to red. Now when you go on here, highlight it, it'll turn yellow when you highlight over it. Do the same for when you press the button, let's say blue. Easy to be able to tell the difference and the selected color, let's say green. And the disabled color, will make that purple. So this way you can get an idea of what each thing is, what each of the other things I'm doing is doing. 
So you can hover over it. It's normally red. Hover over it, yellow. Press it, blue. Let go, green. And when it's disabled, it'll turn purple, but we're not gonna mess with this disabling right now. If you're in there, you can also adjust the transparency, whatnot. Generic stuff with the color. Other than that, we'd have it down here, which is a one-click event, which in other words, something will happen when we click it. Right now, we're not gonna add anything. You can hit the plus button to add something, minus get rid of it, but we're not, we have no functions for the button yet, so we won't worry about that right now. For now, let's get rid of the canvas, and the last thing is the camera option. This will just allow you to add a new camera, let's switch out of 2D mode. And so now we have two cameras in the scene as opposed to one. So we'll get rid of that. So for now, I'm going to leave this tutorial right here. We're going to go over a lot more stuff. There's still more things to go over. See the audio source and sound there and all these prod all these different items down here. Not just in the hierarchy, but down here. So we're going to go over different things next time with the projects and the console and even way to change up the way your screen is. Because normally, mine looks a little different. And we're also going to go over some new windows. Different things. Different video, though. So for now... Hopefully, you learned a lot from this tutorial.